well uh, welcome to this video in this video we will be uh, trying to find uh, the euler lagrange equation corresponding to some lagrangians uh, namely we will be uh, interested to find one of the equation uh, to be the L uh, lorentz force which is the equation of motion corresponding to this lagrangian and the another uh, equation of motion will basically uh, involve the involve this Lagrangian and we will be finding the uh, geodesic equations uh, as the uh, equation of motion corresponding to this uh, action and this is the Lagrangian that we see. So uh, let's start. So in case of the first Lagrangian, we have uh, the velocity as the time derivative of the position coordinates and V is the potential it is a function of the positions as well as the time and the a a is the vector potential a is the vector potential and uh, it is again a function of each of the coordinates so a is of the form of a1 a2 and a3 and each of the a's are a function of x the positions as well as the time component so with this setup, we first uh, try to find the uh, Euler-Lagrange equation for the uh, for the um, coordinate x. There is three Euler-Lagrange equation: one for x, one for y, one for z. We find for x first. So derivative with respect to x, x doesn't appear here. X appears here and here. So in here, I have this dependence of x. So the derivative will be this partial uh, derivative of potential, the scalar potential with respect to x. And plus we will have the derivative here with respect to x in this a1, a2, a3. So that is uh, that what we have done here, a1, a2 and a3. Now we will do the derivative with respect to x dot. So the position dot uh, is the derivative with respect to time which appears in the velocity part. Now it doesn't appear here because this is just a function of x, y and z. Uh, but it again appears here because here we have a dot product with respect to the velocity. So this gives us this as the uh, derivative with respect to x dot. Now as per Euler-Lagrange equation this is the euler lagrange equation and then now we will substitute the values of these two here now as after we substitute the value of these two uh, now it is a matter of simplifying uh, these uh, equations and uh, you can go through the solution uh, this will finally lead to the second order derivative to be this part minus q times this and plus we have a v cross b x part. So v cross b is a vector, we take the x component of that vector. Now remembering uh, how we define the electric field uh, to be negative of gradient plus the uh, time derivative of the vector potential, we can see that the mx double dot which is the force associated with a particle is actually in x direction it is equal to uh, charge times the electric field plus q v cross b the x component similar equation will hold for y and z component and this will finally gives us the form of the lorentz force so uh, this was the derivation of the lorentz force now let's look at uh, a more complicated derivation which also requires a bit of handling of the uh, the indices of the various uh, vectors and tensors that appear here. So we start with the uh, action in this form. Uh, some of the comments about this, this action is that this, this action is actually proportional uh, to the uh, proper time that we measure. So basically when we trace a path in, in space time, uh, the length of the path is actually 
an invariant and it is represent invariant of the chart that we choose the length and this invariance uh, of the length is actually uh, related to the fact that this Lagrangian, uh, this uh, action is actually invariant under different charts or coordinate transformations. So why is it proportional to the length can be understood by going to the Minkowski space where this entire action is actually simply the integration of the space time interval that we see here. So uh, once we have enough motivation for this action, uh, because it is proportional to the proper time, it is uh, truly an invariant quantity. Now we look for the variation of this action in a similar way that we did in the previous video for finding the uh, equation of motion for the field. Uh, so we look for the variation for, th for this action. So when we vary this, we vary this with respect to, uh, we use the chain rule. So this, we vary this entire thing. So this will give us uh, this for, okay, uh, because uh, x power half will be uh, derivative of x power half, we can get as half 1 over root x. Now we have to vary this action. Now, delta of this will break into three parts, delta of this, delta of this and delta of this, that I have written here. Now, now we have to just find out the delta of this thing. Delta of g mu nu, uh, delta of g mu nu is just uh, del alpha g mu nu, g mu nu is coordinate dependent times, uh, so I have done, now I will just take the delta of uh, z alpha. So z is the coordinate or the coordinate chart, the chart that we have chosen for this. So this is the first term and then we have delta of the second term and then we have the delta of the third term. But now uh, what we can do is we can convert these terms to a total derivative. So here the z dot that we see here, this dot is the derivative with respect to lambda. The parameter, uh, the parameter that maps the curve, that maps a curve to the chart in the space time. So uh, this is the, so this d over d lambda, we can write the second term here using a total derivative. So we have d over d lambda of this minus we have the d over d lambda of the this part. So that these two terms, these two terms combine to give us this term here. Similarly, we break this term also into two of these terms. Now we see that this part and this part is a total derivative and here we have an integral and this parts vanish under this total derivative term. So then we come to this line here. So here now we have three terms and we have already taken care of uh, some of the total derivatives. Now what we do is uh, now we have to break out this thing. Uh, this entire derivative with respect to lambda can be broken out by first calculating the derivative with respect to this and then calculating the derivative with respect to this. So that gives us two terms here and here. And now uh, there is a, now once we have reached till this point, we have uh, five terms here. We have five terms here, but, uh, but now we see, uh, now we look at this term here. Suppose this term and this term. So you see both mu and nu are summed over indices. So we can flip the mu nu index and keep this thing same. So these two terms can be added together. And this gives us uh, this factor of two. So we have the first term. We have these two terms summed over to give this. And now we have this term. So we have total five terms, two plus three, four, five. Now we have to, uh, rename the variables. So you see, uh, suppose uh, 
from the first term we can take out this delta z delta z alpha so from the first term if we take out the delta z alpha and uh, from the uh, and then we can take out the two times delta z alpha from the second term also from the first and second term we can take out uh, this delta z alpha but now we can also now write these terms these term doesn't have a delta z alpha in them but we can write them by using the fact that this mu is a summation index and then we can change the index mu to alpha here nu to alpha we can change and take out the delta z alpha common from all these terms so uh, when we do such a calculation uh, when we take out this uh, delta z alpha common uh, we will finally reach here we will finally reach at this uh, z double dot in this form now what we can do is that we can multiply we can use the property that g alpha beta g beta gamma is delta alpha uh, gamma we can use this property uh, to take the inverse of the matrix G here and that will produce uh, this uh, G alpha beta here and then and then we can finally see the form of our geodesic equation so so here that we see here let me just uh, write it down so we have uh, z double dot beta is equal to minus half g alpha beta del mu g alpha nu plus del nu g alpha mu uh, minus del alpha g mu nu z dot mu z dot nu so this is the equation that we have here now the point is that uh, we can uh, we can we can see that uh, this has a index beta here and the beta index in this entire thing is not summed up so this is actually the connection coefficient beta and then we have two indices here mu and nu so this will give us mu nu so this is the form of the connection coefficient such that we get finally solving the Lagrangian to the Lagrangian equation is simply the geodesic equation that we say. So uh, in other words we get the equation of motion as this is the equation of motion this is also so basically the uh, extremized curve the extremized curve over a space time is actually the straightest curve over the space time because this is the geodesic equation of motion which gives rise to the straightest curve and this is also the lagrangian equation of motion which gives rise to the uh, extremized curve so now uh, we can perform one more uh, exercise with this uh, suppose we take a metric so uh, given we have a metric l uh, 1 minus 2 gm over r t dot square this dot is again with respect to a lambda parameter not time and minus 1 minus 2 gm over r minus 1 r dot square so suppose we have a metric of this form uh, this metric is uh, the first two part is the Schwarzschild metric now if we try to find the Lagrangian equation of motion corresponding to t coordinate we can do is uh, del l over del t is uh, del l over del t dot and then there is a dot here now uh, we can calculate this so del l over del t is zero because t doesn't appear anywhere del l over del t dot we get a factor of two uh, so 
it is actually minus one minus two G M over R. Uh, and then we have a T dot. And then we have a dot of this and this is equal to zero. Now uh, we can quickly solve this. Uh, this will be uh, so this dot is with respect to lambda. So the first term goes out and uh, we can write 1 over r as minus 1 over r square. So we get 2 g m over. Uh, so we get actually the first term won't go out. So uh, we get r power minus uh, r square r dot t dot plus t double dot equal to 0. So uh, the final uh, the equation that we get is this t double dot uh, plus 2 g m over r square r dot t dot equal to 0. Uh, but now you see this part is precisely the tau uh, this t stands for the zero coordinate so we put a zero here r is the first coordinate this is zero. so tau one zero is two g m over r square so uh, we can uh, use this principle we can use the fact that the uh, the fact that this equation z double dot mu plus uh, tau mu alpha beta uh, z dot alpha z dot beta equal to zero. This is a geodesic equation as well as a uh, as well as a Lagrangian equation to actually find the connection coefficients. So uh, that's all for this video. Uh, so in this video, we uh, proved the fact that uh, extremizing extremizing such an action extremizing such an action actually gives rise to the uh, geodesic equation. So uh, this last part is the geodesic equation that we see here. Uh, maybe uh, so it is z double dot of beta plus tau beta mu nu z dot mu z dot nu equal to zero. So that's all for this.